Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Larry Johns. I'd like to welcome you to Ground Zero Lounge. Thanks for being here. We are coming to you live from Dante's downtown Portland, Oregon. Got a little snow coming over the hill. Happy to be here. I hope you are. We are being broadcast and rebroadcast and rebroadcast on the internet. 30, 40, 50,000 listeners listening into the largest, most amazing news show in the world where you have an opportunity to come up and say what's ever on your mind. We don't have an agenda. We're trying to find the truth. It isn't always easy. I like to find out what stories I loved in the last week, which ones I hated. And I think the one that I like the best, which I like to serve as a metaphor in a lot of different realms, is that the ice caps are melting and all kinds of strange shit is coming out. We've got archaeologists, we've got scientists, we've got botanists, everyone wants to find out what these strange animals, these bones, these fossils, it appears that the North Pole at one time was a tropical ocean. Okay? It appears that in Antarctica there are a lot of volcanoes and strange animals that we haven't seen for hundreds of millions of years. Now, this is just a small metaphor of what is happening to us inside. As humans, we carry all of this DNA with us. We are the culmination of all of that. We carry it here. And what's happening is that we're melting. And strange things are coming out inside us. Now, I know that most of us during the week are stuck like I am in some uh, rat race job. Being told to do inane stuff on the double, produce, or hit the street. Okay, so we're here to recover from that, but we're also here to recover a certain spirituality that says no matter what kind of propaganda is coming down, somehow we can get at the truth. And that's what we do here at Ground Zero Lounge. Now a story just hit today, now not all of you may have heard it, but James Cameron claims to have the bodies of Jesus Christ and Mary Magdalene, along with a possible child. Okay? Now this is the kind of story that this is the kind of story that we have been talking about for a long time here at Ground Zero Lounge. Okay? We've talked about Remy Chateau, we talked about the corpses, we talked about the desire to attack the established religions of the established state. In the name of what? Well, we don't know. We don't know, do we? We don't know exactly what these news stories mean, what they intend, but there's a gradual melting away. Now, I would ask, in this segment, I would like to ask you, what is it in the last week that intrigued you, that you loved, that you hated? Come on up to the mic. Come on up to the mic and say something that, that grabbed you during the week, that made the world seem like, you know, the, whatever it is. Here comes a fellow, Eric, what do you have to say? Well, I got some good news. Good news, that's what I like. I got here. some good news. I just want to say thank you to Ground Zero Lounge. Okay. Thank, thank you, Ground Zero Lounge. Lounge. When the MC announced that gold was going up uh -huh. a year, year and a half ago, it was a uh, 422, I believe. When was it that Clyde said everyone should buy gold? That was two and a half years ago. A long time ago. Maybe. Well, gold is now going seven, over $700 an ounce. And I would encourage you all to uh, take Clyde's advice. Buy some gold. Hitch, hitch your wagon to the angel that rides in the whirlwind. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, it's not just economic success, although that's, that's interesting. Um, Heraclitus, one of the earliest uh, Greek philosophers, got a corner on the great press market only to say, well, hey, a philosopher can do it. 
We all can do it, right? We all can make money out of our knowledge and out of our truth. Go ahead, Glenn. I'd like to, I'd like to talk about left gatekeeping. The what? Left gatekeeping. People like Amy Goodman, who refuses to talk about the truth. Talking, talking to the mic, Glenn. Who refuses to talk about I'm talking about left gatekeeping. People on the left who are in effect collaborating with the official story on 9-11 and with the election fraudsters and the warmongers and the war profiteers and everything else. They refuse to talk about 9-11. It looks like they're either terrified or being paid off or both. I would like to add that Portland Progressive Alliance uh, it, uh, produces the Portland Alliance newspaper are notorious left gatekeeping. They are, in effect, collaborationists under the thrall of Noam Chomsky, who is the, the primo left <laughs> gatekeeper. I, I, thank you, Glenn. I, and that is something that's always disturbed me, is how Noam Chomsky, outside of this country, is considered the liberal conscience, when in fact, he's a stooge for the right and has been all along. Things are not always what they seem, but when we have a situation where reality melts into hyper-reality, when hyper-reality melts into reality, and the people prefer the lie, then we have to come to Ground Zero Lounge and find out where's the truth. Now this gentleman said, hey, Clyde was talking years ago about buying gold, and it came to pass. It's just connecting the dots that's what we're doing tonight, and I'd like to present Clyde, who's going to come up and connect some new dots for us tonight. Clyde Lewis. Hey. So, uh, it's been a crazy week as far as the news goes. Uh, if, you, if you've been watching the news, I always tell people to watch the news, not for the fact that it's going to give you the truth, I'd like for you to watch the news so you can monitor how it is that everything seems to be unraveling on time. And how it, it seems to me that if you look at all the things surrounding the main news story, you can find out what really is going on. And we do this here at Ground Zero Lounge all the time. And people have been writing me and they've been asking me questions. And they've been asking me about some of the things I've said in the past. And... I say to them that a lot of the time I'm throwing things out there in hopes that people will understand that even though it may not be something that you think is important at the moment, everybody has their own agenda. Everybody wants to talk about the latest UFO sighting, the latest Trooper Copper sighting, they want to talk about the latest whatever, uh, whatever political thing that they want to jump on, whether it be 9 11 or what have you. I will get to it if I feel that it's important. I will get to it so that you will know why, you know, why things are being brought up. Now, I got a couple things I want to kind of touch on a little bit before I get to the, the real crux of it. How many people, and, and, I, and I'm going to bring her up tonight because something weird happened in the news. How many people saw the uh, Anna Nicole Smith footage of her in clown makeup? By applause. Now, do you know how odd it is that back in October, when we were talking about the Wendigo face, right. we were talking about the face of death and, and, and how you, you, it, it has sort of a clownish look to it, and how it's, it's the, the, the clown face itself is a symbol, it's, it's a face of death, it's a representation of death, and how uh, throughout the years it's evolved into becoming something a, a, a bit of a, a, a thing to f a laugh at and, and, and to uh, make light of. But a lot of people are afraid of clowns and they don't understand why. The reason why is because the clown is a representation of that Wendigo mentality. That idea that things around you stop, start looking like they can be eaten or consumed or killed or they can die. And so when I saw that footage of Anna Nicole Smith with that clown face on and hearing Howard K. Stern asking her if she was on a mushroom trip. I got unnerved because that was the same type of face that we showed on the screen and I had told you that that face equates with death. And that face you'll be seeing a lot more of and people were 
blinking and they were you know looking twice at the face that was that that dead white pale face with the darkened eyes and the and the smeared lips and and that face of death and that face of uh, what we called meth at the time the idea of the golem the idea of the homunculus the idea of using that homunculus to do a deed or to, to create some sort of chaos or, or to be enslaved. Now, if you look at the, if you look at the, uh, I guess the bare essence of Anna Nicole Smith, she was a slave. She was enslaved by her own fame. She was enslaved by those around her, maybe by her own greed. And then at the end, when she died, she had been kicked around a lot more than most people deserve, I think. I, I really don't think that having that many stories about her really did us any good. And I think that this is where we go back to what I talked about last week with hyperreality. We are now at the peak of our hyperreality, and within the hyperreality, we're having what is known as the interactive apocalypse, where by the click of a mouse, you're able to find out just what is unraveling. And you choose to either believe it or not believe it, but now more and more things are unraveling, and that is what the apocalypse is. You see, when you live in a society of spectacle, they expect you to follow a loop type of mentality. They continually loop the same things over and over again to remind you of something, we don't know what, to remind you of an icon. Anna Nicole Smith was looped over and over again in the minds of the people for some reason. A remembrance of the goddess, a remembrance of the goddess motif, perhaps the beauty, bringing that around. You notice that we see beauty die, with Anna Nicole, and we see beauty die with Britney Spears. We see people unraveling with shootings like in Salt Lake City and in Philadelphia. We see people losing their minds like Britney Spears beating up a car. We see that on TV. We see her shaving her head. We see people unraveling on the screen. Remember last week I was telling you about the hyperreality and how when a group of people all believe in the hyperreality and not enough in the reality, there is a mass psychosis that takes over and then eventually when people realize that their lives are nothing but a lie, they lash out either at themselves or they lash out at other people. And they realize that their lives have been nothing more than an illusion. They've been following illusion their whole life. And that is why when I speak about the things I talk about, sure, maybe what I talk about is in the hyper-reality realms. And maybe it's too far-fetched for you to swallow. And people walk out of this bar all the time shaking their heads going, who the hell is this guy? I'll tell you who I am. I'm Clyde Lewis. I'm a national talk show host. I've been on several television specials talking about what I talk about. And even though people might think I'm crazy, every time they refer back to what I talk about. I'm here in Portland, Oregon. I've been all over the country. I've lived all over the world. And I'm here to tell you what the world is really like beyond that illusion. And it may strike you as odd because some of the things I talk about may not apply to you, not yet. But eventually you'll hear about them in the news. And when you do hear about them in the news, you're gonna look back and say, why didn't I listen? Why was it that we didn't come to a conclusion? Why is it that it's so far out there? It's not out of reach. You can find out what the truth is. It's like in the beginning, talking about how two, three years ago, I told you to invest in gold. A number of you already did, and a number of you are going to start saying that it's making some money now. Gold has gone up in price, and it continues to do so. Yes, it continues to do so. And some people are very grateful for that because I saw the trend. And this was long before anybody else told you to invest in gold. I told you a long time before that, and for the longest time, even when I was on the air, I ran commercials and no one thought that it was worth the trouble to invest. Some people did and now they're paying, now they're getting payoffs for it. And I'm not ashamed for telling people to do something that I thought would help them out. Go ahead. Specifically on gold, um, I was living in the old South Africa in 1979 when the Hunter Brothers of Fort Worth, Texas tried to corner the market and gold was almost reached $1,000 an ounce. You can imagine in South Africa they paid attention to that. Um, I also heard an economist with, um, well, he wrote for the, the, the major newspaper in town, a guy named Colin Campbell. Um, he, he observed, he done the numbers, and he checked with other people. At, just, at that time, just over $1,000 an ounce, America could fund its national debt. 
So you can remember that that is going on too with this inflation. We have talked about, here on this stage, we have talked about the possibility that other countries could bankrupt this country in a matter of seconds. They could bankrupt this country by pulling their money out of our banks. And when they do, it's going to change our way of life. Our way of life is on the verge of changing now. In fact, we need to learn that everything here in America is not as it seems. And we're li many of us are living in this hyper-reality phase. We're, we're in this hyper-reality where we think that here in America, the bling makes sense, that you know, you gotta have the right kind of bling, the right kind of street cred, you gotta wear the right kind of hairstyle, the right kind of clothes, you gotta be into the same types of music as other people. When in reality, our ability to be unique is being taken from us because people are ridiculing you and, 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 and yelling at you and telling you you have to be this way or that way. And they tell you you have to vote this way or that way. Republican, Democrat, what have you. When in reality, there's a group of people that are ganging up against you. And you have to get together and take your differences, put them aside, and be obsessed with what it is that makes you free. There's only one group of individuals I know of, and maybe there are others. It's one group of individuals I know of that can take their religious differences, they can take their political differences, and set them aside for one thing, and that is their gun. I'm talking about the National Rifle Association. Now, I'm not up here going to do a commercial for you know Chuck Heston, he's my president. But what I am going to tell you is, is there's a group of people that are obsessed enough about their goddamn guns that they're willing to do anything. They lobby Congress, they go, and they fight for the right to bear arms. Now, it's because they believe that their right to bear arms is being taken from them at all times, and they want to make sure that their rights are upheld. Now, there are things out there that are more important than whether or not you have a gun. It's part of your constitutional right. What is also important is your right to get fair trials, is your right to have justice served, is your right to be represented, your right to vote, your right to have an individuality about you and cognitive resonance, that is your right. And the government doesn't listen to you when you tell them that they're pushing too hard. And if a government is not listening to you when you tell them that they're pushing too hard, then what you do is you ignore them. And I don't want to be the guy that everybody says, oh, turn him off, he's saying not to vote. I'm telling you, don't fucking vote. I'm telling you, put a vote of no confidence and tell the person that is going to be running that he better stand up for the things you believe in, and that is freedom, that is the right to life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness, because many times some guy who's making millions of money, millions of dollars, does not give a shit about me and my nine to five that I have to do at the workplace every day, and the taxes I have to pay. Guaranteed. Guaranteed, exactly. Guaranteed. No one can convince me that a man who wakes up every morning and knows that under his command, thousands of people have died. No one can tell me that this man has the same morality as I do and that God talks to him. You can't tell me that a God would tell a man like George W. Bush that he needs to go out and kill these people and also declare more wars in Iran and other places. His declare, his declaration of God telling him to do this is no different than the declaration of Allah or whomever telling somebody else to murder or kill. People who talk to God and take uh, machine guns or take 12 gauges and walk through malls, those people get sent to jail or they're shot. It doesn't apply because a guy wears a three-piece suit and talks to dignitaries. That doesn't make him any better, that makes him a criminal in a suit. And I've said this, and many people are talking about this now. It, it starts with a, with a planting of a, of a mental seed and it works its way up. And if you include it in your conversations, sure, you may get a few scoffs, a few rolling of the eyes, but you know what? Doesn't matter anymore. Because they're not going to roll their eyes when the truth finally shows itself. Go ahead. I'd like to amplify the point that ownership of guns is no longer just a right-wing preserve. Um, 
a couple of years ago, I changed my registration from Green Party temporarily to Democrat so that I could vote for Dennis Kucinich. Um, I, I, I think I, I can't remember where I put it now. Um, but I, you know, I thought, I must be the only human being in this state who voted in favor of gun ownership and Kucinich. I have since found that there are an amazing number of people. The people that would cross the line to support Kucinich are also the people independent enough to recognize the importance of guns when we face the international police state that we do now. Well, it's a, it's a constitutional matter. It's a constitutional matter. And Americans who have forgotten to think about defending their constitutional rights, of course, will simply lose them. There's, there's no question. First, they give you the inconvenience, and then they tell you the inconvenience is not going to matter because of all the stuff that you're going to get later on, all the benefits you're going to get from a police state, a, a, a camera on every street corner. They tell you about the benefits of it all. The benefits is going to prevent crime. It never prevents crime. It just records it. And sometimes video cannot hold up in court. And see, these are things that you need to be aware of. They give you, they sell it to you in a nice way. They say, well, we need a fingerprint and chip your children so they won't be kidnapped. They'll always be kidnapped. They'll always be kidnapped. No, that's true. They'll always be raped. They'll always be molested. No chip, no number, and no video is going to save a child. How many times have we seen video, uh, a company saying, video take your child, take your your child, and how many children do we hear about every day that are taken away and molested? It hasn't prevented a damn thing. Oh, but it, it helps in the dental records, so when we find their corpse floating in the Willamette, it will, it will help us identify the child. It doesn't prevent anything. If you want a conviction, then maybe it might work there, and maybe not. You see, it's still the same 50-50 chance going either way. People can take pictures of UFOs in the sky, and they can be blurry, or they can be plain and simply discs in the sky, and they still say that's not proof that an, an extraterrestrial aircraft's flying in the sky. So how is it that we take a picture of your child getting abducted? That doesn't prove anything either. They can take it and they can make it say or make it look like the way they want to make it look or say. It's because they have the power to do that. They have, they have bottomless pockets that can pay for your opinion. They can mold your opinion. They can use causality. They, they do causal engineering to mold your opinion and to change your ideas. And they're doing it now. Not just with your government. They're doing it everywhere across the board. They're changing your taste in music. They're telling you what is funny. They're telling you what you should be concerned about. They don't, they don't give you a choice anymore. They just put this in front of you and say, this is the way it is because we have authenticated the hyper-reality. We have authenticated the fakery. We can fake whatever and loop it over and over and over and over in your mind till finally you're convinced that it's reality. How many times did we watch 9-11, the planes crashing into the buildings? How many times did we watch that loop go over and over and over in our minds? And how many times do we remember that day when it goes over and over and over until finally it molds into something else, into some blur from the past? That is what I mean by hyper-reality. That is what I mean by the simulation, the simulacrum, and the idea that only the electronic image in your brain is all you have about 9-11. And with that electronic image, they can remind you of how it might have been, not how it was. How many people know that when the buildings came down on that day, three networks actually said that it was a controlled demolition. You don't remember that, do you? Every single commentator said it looks like they, demo they, they demolished those buildings and they had said, I've got the audio of it. I remember it. I remember it. You remember it? Oh, yeah. They said that it was a controlled demolition. And then immediately turned around and said, oh, we don't want to say that. Change that, change that tune right now. How many people remember that there was a bomb, uh, there was an exploding van in front of the Pentagon prior to the plane going in? Anybody remember that? Completely omitted from the memory hole. Why? Because they looped it the way they wanted you to have it, the way they wanted you to remember it. They took away certain parts and put in other parts. How many people remember that George W. Bush 
got up and said that he saw the first plane hit the World Trade Center. How many people realize that that's an impossibility because no one saw the first plane hit the World Trade Center on television because they didn't have the footage until four days later? If he would have saw that first plane go in, he saw something that they knew was going to happen. Close circuit monitor. Close circuit monitor. If he did, and he said in a Florida press conference that he said that was one terrible pilot. I saw the first plane go in. Yes. He said that he saw the first plane go in. There's no way he saw that first plane go in unless he watched it on a closed circuit television, unless they were aware that this was about to go down. They conveniently eliminated that from the record. Why? Because they know the American people lack imagination and they know that you won't question it as long as some think tank with a lot of money is going to push that agenda onto you. Wake up. Wake up and realize that you have been a part of a hyper-reality scam. Exactly. You're a part of Plato's cave. You're chained to your TV set, watching the loop go over and over and over and over and over again until they finally program you into believing what they want you to believe about 9-11. How many times, we got up on this stage right here and we talked about Princess Diana at the beginning of the year and how they're going to be rerunning all of that again as well. What was Best Picture? At the, uh, who, got, who got the Best Actress Award? The Queen. That movie, The Queen, was a reenactment of what happened in England. And it was a version that was more sanitized to make the Queen look more human because everybody thought she was inhuman. And how many people are going to remember that more than going to remember what really happened? How many, I, I heard somebody the other day talk about um, Oh, they were talking about how they had a red carpet event here in Portland, Oregon. And they said, complete with paparazzi. And the one person commented, I hope the paparazzi doesn't follow anyone home. That was a Princess Diana hint right there. I was talking here on the stage about the killing of the Divine King as well. The idea of using a proxy or perhaps using the real thing to bring about the idea of the killing of a leader to purify a country, a sacrificial lamb if you were, it's bringing back that, that messianic meme in your brains. Movies like uh, uh, Children of Men have a messianic theme. Movies like The Matrix have a messianic theme. They all have this messianic theme they want to roll over and over and over again in the loop of your brain because what they want to do is they want to recreate a messianic figure, whether it be a president or a king or a prince or even an imam. Think, Clyde, just for a second. After 40 years, we mentioned it last week, the JF Kennedy, new JF Kennedy footage. In other words, we're celebrating the death of that king as well. Yeah, and then of course, they, yeah, they bring back the JFK footage out of the blues. JFK footage. Out of the like I said, you know, I, last from? week I said, you know, this guy has this, this footage that he's had lying around for 40 years. And it's, it's footage of Kennedy two minutes before he shot. I'm thinking, yeah, I can just see this 40 years from now. Some guy's saying, you know, I have this videotape of a plane going into the Pentagon. And I, 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 I don't know, maybe it's worth something. <laughs> I mean, this is, it's really convenient the way these things just happen in sequence. And I've talked about the idea that there is a blueprint that they're following. It's either Nostradamus or the Book of Revelation or what have you. But it's like, I call it the Templar tantrums. It's like the tent. The, it's like yeah, you understand that reference. The Templar tantrums. These guys were like these Knights nice Templar guys, or these people who believe in these old Rosicrucian ideas, or these old Merovingian ideas, are now wanting to bring back this Gnostic shit. Do you remember last year about this time? What were we talking about? We were talking about the Judas Gospel. Remember that? How they unveiled that Judas and Jesus were in on the plot to have him die. That they made the plan, and then he went and committed suicide. And I told you, I know what that is. It is a way to change religion. Not only do they want to change how you feel about your government, they want to change how you feel about your religious practices and your faith, and whether or not Christian values and Christian ideas are going to be up, a big upheaval of these beliefs and ideals are going to be basically turned over by new revelations about your faith. You believed all this for so long, they've been lying to you all along. 
priests are actually good people. They don't have sex with little boys. No. And then they reveal that they do. So you don't trust churches anymore. You don't trust the very places that you want to go to. Because they want to eliminate bit by bit your belief systems and then they want to implant in your head new belief systems. It is the new world order. It is the unraveling and the revealing and it's the apocalypse. You know where the apocalypse begins? It doesn't begin with a little scripture in the Bible. It begins here. The apocalypse begins right here. Yeah. It starts in your head and it goes down and it goes down into your heart. And you're right, you're right. That is the, that, what he just said is true. You, when it goes from your head down to your heart, it is you that manifests the apocalypse. It is you that brings about your own destruction. It is you that brings, brings about your own fulfillment of prophecy. It is you that becomes their robot in their new world order that they want to bring to you. And that new world order will be an order that will eliminate all imperfect things on this planet. And everybody has their idea of who should go from this planet because they're taking up space. Everyone has an idea of who needs to be taken out. And your leaders do too. Your leaders have an idea of who needs to be taken out first. They go for the Muslims. Then, they go for the blacks. Some people want to go after the Mexicans. And then after the Mexicans are taken out, then who do we go after next? The gays. We go after the gays. And then we go after... The atheists. What's that? The atheists. The atheists. The Take out those people. Take we don't want them around. The non-taxpayers. Take out those who don't pay their taxes. Take out those who have diseases like AIDS, HIV, H5N1. Take out those people too. Put them in camps. Or even, even further, Clyde, why don't you just take out everyone who cannot prove their own identity? Right, take out everyone who can't prove their own identity. There's one in the spotlight, you don't look like to me. There's one over there with spots. If I had my way, I'd have all of you shot. That's a Pink Floyd lyric, for those of you that love Pink Floyd. But that is what they're working on. Fascism continues to grow and people who are afraid of dying at the hands of the fascist sometimes knuckle under and they become just like that. And we right now are on the verge of becoming more and more like them. Because we're afraid. I work at work, a lot of times people tell me that they go with the flow because they have a lot to lose. They don't particularly like the way the companies run, but they don't want to go to HR and talk about it because if they do, that means they may get fired. Or they may lose their job and they have a wife and kids to support. That's what they do. They give you what you're going to lose and they show it to you every day on the nightly news. The nightly news is the news that you're, lo that you're going to lose. These are the things that might happen to you if you don't do this. These are the things that you're going to lose if you don't do this. These are the people that are going to ruin your lives if you don't do this to them. These are the people that we're exposing because they're ripping off the system, but you wouldn't do that, would you? It's against the rules. And if you do it, you're no better than they are. And if you're no better than they are, what are you? You are a criminal. And if you're a criminal, where do we put you? We put you in a camp. And if we can't build enough camps to put everybody in those camps, we put borders around the camp. Even if the border surrounds the entire fucking United States of America. Oh, we forgot about the ovens. They come later. Not that much later. Right there. Everybody talks about how they want to keep the suspicious brown people out with the borders and putting up the fences. How many people realize that those borders coming up are not to keep the brown people out, but to keep the white people in? This is your fucking gay community. It's exactly what it is. You live in a place that is a death camp. It's disguised as an amusement park. 
The only difference between America and those other places you hear about is we have Disneyland and we have Las Vegas. And where Disneyland and Las Vegas? Your escape to what? Hyper reality. Watching Lost is your escape to hyper reality. Watching 24 is your escape to hyper reality. Watching Jericho is your escape to hyper reality. Where you'd rather watch Hollywood blow the fuck up, blow this whole city up, and tell you you're next. 24, seeing torture, seeing death, seeing destruction, you're next. Meteorites. Meteorites going out of the sky, you're next. It's all there. You're in the crosshairs. You're in the crosshairs of where? Ground zero. Yeah. It's ground zero. This is where you're at. Ground zero is where you at. Ground zero is where you end up. Ashes are ashes, and charcoal is charcoal, and we're all equal in the end. When the whole world is burned, scorched earth, you're all equal in the end. And their scorched earth policy is happening gradually. And they're going to undermine all those things you hold sacred and dear. And when they take them away, then they're going to come back and they're going to give you the new, improved stuff. Because that's how it operates. The other day I was sitting in the market and I was eating, eating Lorna Dune crackers, Lorna Dune shortbreads. How many people have seen those things? Oh, yeah. I love those things. I, I love those things. I applaud. I blow them in my coffee and they're great. I saw on the box, now better tasting. I thought, well, I liked them before. They don't taste any different now. Better tasting. What, they added something to them? High fructose. Uh, High fructose. Uh, Human blood, you know? Feces. Lord of Dunes is people, ladies and gentlemen. They, they put people in my Lord of Dunes. It tastes grandma floating around my coffee. I was amazed at how one little burst tells me that it's better tasting. I put it in my mouth and I thought, I don't taste anything different, but suggesting it now is as easy as being making it so. So, if it's suggested that the country is under siege, if it's suggested that terrorists are waiting for you under your pillows, if it's suggested that demons are under your bed, then by God, they're there because in a hyper-reality state, this is what is reality. Your demons are very real, your aliens are very real, your Bigfoots are very real, your UFOs are huge. Chicago O'Hare Airport, November 7th, big UFO over the area, UFO flap, everybody starts to see them. If people start seeing zombies walking down the street sucking the brains out of people, I'm sure it'll make the nightly news, and I'm sure it'll be huge. And I'm sure many people will start believing that this is really going on. Because in the apocalypse, anything can happen. And they can make you believe whatever they want, because they have the power to do so. They have the cameras, the lighting, the bells, the whistles, they have the hyper-reality, and it's all there on TV. And if it's on TV, it has to be real. That's the reality that you let yourself into. It's a very scary, scary thing. It's the movies, even. If the movies show it, this has to be reality. If, if a guy has sex with a woman in a porn film, and he can keep it going for like three minutes, and then give the money shot, that must be reality. And many women out in the audience know that that's not the reality, right? <laughs> right? By applause with him? Oh, no one wants to admit it? Alright! Yeah. Yeah, there's one. The one out there says, yeah. Okay. But it's true. I've got a question for the audience, Clyde. What? How many of you out there know of the secret? Well, there's a book and a video and a DVD or whatever called The Secret. You don't know? It's, it's, it's kind of a new age. The reason I bring it up is because not only is it a hyper reality what Clyde is talking about, but this thing called the secret is basically like this. There's a lady walking down the street, she sees a necklace in a jewelry store window and she thinks really, really hard about that necklace and then poof, she's wearing the necklace. I mean, it's, it's like Tony Robbins, it's like saying, your mind can control reality, 
and the middle class is eating it up. If you haven't heard of the secret, you will be soon because there's little cults of people. Have you seen the secret? And hey, I work, I work on car lots, and believe me, they believe in the secret. Just believe somebody's going to come down and buy a car, and it's going to happen. So this is hyper reality, but on the back end. It's twisted. It's like saying, oh, it's like a Pollyanna. Just believe that America is great. Believe that America is pure. Believe that everything has not changed since 9-11. And you can make it that way. There is very, very pernicious kind of condition going on. And it's happening right in the belly of the middle class. So watch out for this thing called the secret. It's very divisive. Everything that's going on is pretty divisive, and, and it's well planned out, well thought out, and it's an illusion. And uh, I just really wish that, you know, I, I know a lot of people, it's a tough thing to give up your illusions. I mean, we can't let the truth get in the way of a good story. And there are a lot of good stories out there that people want to believe and would rather believe. But in reality, they're pretty mundane and pretty mediocre. We have to add whistles and bells, makeup, and all kinds of things to make this stuff look good, otherwise no one will pay attention. Go ahead. I was thinking of uh, living in a police state. No one would ever admit to that. That was part of the hyper reality. You, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know until it was too late if you lived in one. Sure. Uh, an idyllic society where you're only allowed to go certain places because you don't realize, like the village. I was thinking of the prisoner. Um, an idyllic society, as long as you can, you don't leave with the with, the, with the, um, the the border being built to keep us in instead of keeping who's out from coming in. And there's an interesting but it's hard to tell xenophobes this because they're thinking that the brown people are coming in and destroying everything. But there's an interesting point that you mentioned about the prisoner. Because in one of the episodes of the prisoner, I think it's called All for One, the prisoner is is put up as a candidate to become, the, you know, the, yeah, to become free for all. number two, free, free for all, there we are, uh, to become the master of the village. And in fact, underneath in the final episodes, it is revealed that yes, maybe he in fact was the mastermind of the village, keeping himself in prison all the time. So when we, that's maybe what Clyde's talking about. The re, one of the fears we have about tearing the veil of the unreality is that it, it, it's it's a moral one. We are have been contributing to the horrors of the reality all the time. What happens when we when the veil comes off and we find our own culpability? What you say? Or if a, if, a, if, a, if a leader says to uh, the public, "You're free to do whatever you want," but the public goes, "Well, we don't really want to do anything." No, because the condition not to tell us what to do. Nobody really does want to do anything. I mean, yeah. it's it's uh, it's really frustrating because you hear people with good intentions that don't do anything except sit and bitch about it. I mean, I bring it to the attention of people who say, well, Clyde, you know, you bitch about things. And I do bitch about them, but I do, on the other hand, get involved in community meetings. I go to community meetings, and then when I get to the point where I'm frustrated, I throw my hands in the air and say, you have at it. I went to every tram meeting there was to keep that son of a bitch from being built in my neighborhood. It got built. I got told, I got told that it'd be like the Space Needle. I wrote it. It was three minutes of my life I couldn't get back. And I wrote it again to see if maybe I'm just being an old stick in the mud, piece, you know, ass hat, jerk off, you know, angry about everything. I wrote it again. I wrote it with Sadie and said, I looked at each is that all? And I realized, yes, that's it. It's four dollars a ride. They lied. They lied to me. It's not like the Space Needle. You know, where's the nice coffee place I can go have coffee at? You know? Did you hear about Starbucks? Starbucks, speaking of coffee, Starbucks is now worried that they've saturated the market too much and no one goes to their places anymore because they're sick and tired of seeing Starbucks everywhere. Uh, I'll bet you that they'll change the name of some of their places to something else and still own the same places because that way you won't always think, well, God, there's a Starbucks everywhere. I can't go to Starbucks here because there's Starbucks here and Starbucks here. Which Starbucks? Let's make you know, Starbucks. You're going to say why you're bringing it up. Chipotle Grill. Yeah? They're always built near a Taco Bell, right? Right. Chipotle Grill is owned by McDonald's. Right. Because they say, well, we just don't want you to go to Taco Bell. We don't care what you eat. We get more beer stuff. We're going to make it. Right. Right. So we'll make a more gourmet version of the same crap, fast food crap we get at Taco Bell. So that's why sure. we're near each other here. Right? I mean, it just gets to the point where there's just, too, there's, there's overstimulation 
There's over competitiveness. There's nothing simple anymore. We want it here, we want it now, we want it tomorrow. Whatever happened to sticking back and saying, hey, can wait? Whatever happened to, well, we don't need the killer tomorrow to be found. We want to make sure that we have the right guy. But as long as he looks like he masturbates to child porn, he kills John Benet Ramsey. And how and, and remember what we did here? We actually, the minute they came out with that story about John Mark Carr, we had him up on the screen and we already told you that he didn't do it. It took them five weeks to tell you. It took three days at Ground Zero Lounge to figure it out. Now, either they're stupid or we're just lucky. He got up, we got up and talked about gold. Either they're stupid or we're stupid and just lucky or what have you. But any more things, more and more things. Okay, another example that Larry brought up earlier. How many people were here back in October when we showed the footage of the camera crew finding the coffins and the boxes that may contain the bodies of Jesus Christ and Mary Magdalene? Very, 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 very funny. Probably. It was very rare and I said, you know, it was a very light turnout that night and I'm sorry that there was a light turnout that night, but we showed the footage and I said, if this is real, someone's going to come forward and say, oh, by the way, we found the body, cancel Easter. You know, <laughs> Easter no longer exists, we found the bodies of Jesus, we found the body of Jesus. Well, they're now saying they found the body of Jesus. Cameron said he found the body of Jesus Christ, Mary Magdalene, or they call him Mary Magdalene or whatever, and a son by the name of Judah. Now, how convenient is this as we're starting to think about Easter? You know, and it undermines that very thing that I've talked about before where I said, what will be the next thing they'll attack? They'll attack the church. And when they attack the church, they're going to remove all the things that you hold sacred and that you hold faith in, and they're going to try to reveal to you that your faith is bogus. And then what they'll do is that once they get their fingers into that and they remove the very thing that you believe in, the core belief system, which is a resurrection, if anything else... Once they remove that possibility of a resurrection, then they can come in and say, well, but, 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 Jesus had a child, and that child had more children, more children, more children, and then those children moved to France, and those children moved to England, and those children moved to Germany, and we have the Habsburgs, the Windsors, we have the Merovingians, we have all this royalty that have the blood of Christ flowing through them, and they are your leaders, and those are the ones that you need to treat sacred. I told you that the Antichrist is being made now. And I don't care if you don't believe in Jesus. I don't care if you don't believe in anything. They do, and they've got an Antichrist waiting to come out, and they're going to bring him to all of you. And they're not going to say, ladies and gentlemen, the Antichrist. No. It's going to be someone that's going to have all the solutions to all of our problems wrapped up so neatly in a box, and with his bloodline, as good as it is, he's going to bring balance to the force. And then he'll be Darth Vader. It's not going to be Prince Aaron, we know that. I think this is just all due to the Easter Bunny. He, he wants his props. <laughs> what are you going to say, Steve? I think this is just all due to the Easter Bunny. He wants his props. Because yeah. we're going to have to believe the Easter Bunny now if we can't believe, you know. Well, they're going to tell you that. Easter, so. They're going to tell you that there is no Easter Bunny. No Easter Bunny. Uh, no Easter they're Bunny. They're not telling me that. No. <laughs> no Tooth Fairy either. <laughs> it was your mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you and your belief in the fairy. <laughs> Go ahead. Being a capitalist that I am, I, I sort of changed my mind the last year and a half. You stopped burning your money? I stopped burning my money. Oh, God. I still must have a hoard by now. But I like all this stuff that's going on for the pure fact that I can make money. It's business as usual in the apocalypse, and I love business. Business, business is good. Business is good. Thank you, George Bush. Praise Bob. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. Praise the Almighty Apocalypse because if you I can figure out what they're going to do next. I control the whirlwind. <laughs> but I remember that entrepreneur we had about a year ago. He came in and he was, you know, jabbering and getting upset and stuff. And he was saying, well, hell, you guys are just uh, pussies because, hell, I, you know, I put my stock money in uh, prisons, security systems, poison gas. I'm the smart one around here. What are you fools doing? Yeah. Well, you should invest in prisons because they're going to be the best homes your tax dollars are going to buy. 
<laughs> yeah, hey, business is good. Think of all the things. Think of all the things that we're going to be having more of in the future, and that's what you should invest in. Invest in drugs because they're going to want to have some antidote for some disease that they've created. Retirement homes. Invest in retirement homes because those yuppies need a place to shit, eat their oatmeal. Crematorium. Yeah. Crematoriums, funerals, uh, rehabs. Um, God, there's so many things that, I mean, you can capitalize on the misery of everybody. They do. They capitalize on your nightmares. Now, you can do this, okay? You can capitalize on everybody else's misery and be an asshat, be a prick, be a jerk, be a person without a soul. Or you can talk about it and reveal that this is what they're trying to do. Try to destroy, destroy the very core of your belief systems, the very core of what makes you happy, and the very core that, that will destroy your love and tolerance for people around you. Because they know that if they can capitalize on your misery, if they know they can capitalize on your fear, and if they know they can have you in the palm of their hand with one bomb going off somewhere, with, build, with, with looping of planes going into buildings, if they know they can have you just like that, they'll keep it up. And once the hyperreality is, hyper is set in, they have to top themselves. Remember, what was it, three weeks back, we talked about Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Remember that by applause? Remember? And remember when I told you that there were bombs, pipe bombs being sent to places like 311 Wacker Street. And that was in Chicago, and one in Kansas City. And I said, the spirit of the bomb seems to be going around everywhere. Well, just last Saturday, the United States took a part in a nationwide bomb threat drill. And if you blinked, you missed it. But they did do it. Why? And you know what the bombs were? I, IED bombs on street corners. Those IED bombs are set up by your cell phone. You, you basically pick up your phone, can you hear me now? And that's what happens. And they're, they're talking about the possibility of IED bombs in places. I mean, they can put them in dead animals. They can put them in, uh, rocks. in, in rocks. Yeah, they can put them anywhere. And some kid who doesn't know any better picks it up and blows himself up. Blows up the whole city street. They're already talking about the possibility of bombs being hidden everywhere and drills being done to frighten you into thinking this is going out. Fear mongering is what they're doing. So now you have to hide, or you, have to, you either have to hide in your house underneath your covers, or you can go out and brave the world and know that you have a chance of having a bomb go off in your mall, a bomb going off in your place of work, a bomb going off in your car. And see, they make money off of that because what they'll do is they'll develop this crisis and they'll give you the solution. You go out and buy the solution. I love all that. I'm, I'm, I've gone to the dark side. I love it. I'm making money. <laughs> Go ahead, Glenn. Um, I'm going to disagree with you on the old age homes. The uh, what? The old age homes. Okay. Uh, quoting Adolf Hitler, the old and infirm had no strength. Um, quoting Adolf Hitler? Yeah, the old and infirm had no strength to the right. Um, so what know, do we do? We just eliminate them? Sure. We breed them out? Sure. Just let them ride. Mm -hmm. But actually, no, you just go ahead and kill them. Kill them off. Yeah, kill them off, you know, when they're no longer useful to the right. Kill the old and infirm. Yeah. Kill the um, mentally ill. Yeah, but uh, I'm going to ask you to explain what the Bilderberg is and what Bohemian Grove is. But I, I'm thinking of publicity stunts. What if we had a cremation of care echo ceremony here in At Portland? At Dante's? Big, well, I, you know. Do you have an owl I can bring in? Big, we could have a bunny. We, we, yeah, we, could, we could have a big giant rabbit. <laughs> We'd have a big giant rabbit and we could offer the sacrifice of what? What, what would we offer? Hey, hey, I, I, I trust your imagination. Everybody else And the, the, the other one would, would be a, a, a winter ceremony. We build a charcoal, bar, char, charcoal broiled builder. Remember the cheap charcoal broiled builder. Charcoal broiled That's hard to say. The charcoal broiled builder burger. That is tough. The Bilderberg Group, beaten secret, they plan your life for the next 10, 15 years. 
that's what the Bilderberg Group does. And, and what they've been planning since the 70s is population control. Population control, killing off the population. And that's the story of AIDS. Through 2012, through disease, through disease, through uh, bombings, through... They want to reduce the planet to about 3 billion people. Yeah. They say the planet will function better with 3 billion. And they, so, can, make, and they can make money, as Eric said. They yeah, it's more make, profitable for them. They can make money reducing the population. Yes. You'll buy that for a dollar? You'll buy that for a dollar. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I'd like to offer a solution to the Starbucks problem. Um, I think they should offer hand jobs for 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah, at this time, I would like to plug the Mike Judge film, Idiocracy. If you haven't seen it, go and rent it. Uh, it's a futuristic film where people have tattooed barcodes on their wrists. And the favorite hyper-reality TV show is Oh My Balls in which the lead character on a weekly basis spends a half an hour getting his balls racked. <laughs> Speaking of tattoos, how many people have heard what's going on in Florida? There's a group of people calling themselves the Antichrists, and they're getting 666 tattooed on their necks. <laughs> now, it's not that they believe in the devil. It's that they just don't believe in Jesus. <laughs> And so they figured they'll just put these little things on here, but I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute. So they put the mark of the beast on their necks because they don't believe in Jesus yet. The mark of the beast is mentioned in the, in the New Testament, which was written by a guy who allegedly was having a hallucination, was one of Christ's disciples. It's fucked up. It's the end of the world. And these people are just freaking out over it. And, this is the kind of six six and it's and all these Christian groups are commenting on what well, we call them a sect. Not a cult, but a sect. I go, what the <laughs> sect? What, they have more money, so you call them a sect? You know? Go ahead. Um, he was disagreeing with you on the uh, on the uh, old folks' homes. I have to disagree with you on the rehabs. Rehabs are what prison will be for. We don't need to rehabilitate anybody, just put them to work. All right, Mark Fry? Something like that. Yeah. That's what they put up with the concentration camps. Work. That's right. We'll make you free. Arbeit macht frei. Arbeit macht frei. Pretty, yeah, definitely. Good job, Sarah. Yeah, that's great. See Kyle. See Kyle. I was just wondering uh, if anybody managed to catch exactly how much uh, Britney Spears is paying for her uh, month long stay in rehab. Not how much. It, I believe it's about $48,000 for a month stay. Uh, all of the money is in uh, causing people problems with education, uh, running commercials, telling, ask your doctor about this pill. It's showing images of happy people without ever actually telling you what it treats. A minor list of side effects. Well, I hope you don't mind bleeding out your anus, but look how much fun you're having while it's happening. And then once, you're, once you have all the problems with the pills, you go on and uh, make a nice donation of a uh, half a year's income to uh, have yourself cleaned up so that you can come back out and watch more TV and uh, get uh, hooked on more junk. All under the national health care system, and uh, they can uh, do so by um, anybody they don't like. They just deny them health care, and everything takes care of itself. That's, that's really creepy. <laughs> that is it's remarkably creepy. I, I just don't... I just don't know if there are a lot of people that are ready to hear that their lives are an illusion. And, you know, I get emails sometimes from people telling me that I'm a buffoon. They tell me that I'm crazy. They tell me all sorts of things. I just laugh back at them because, I mean, it's like I always tell people, you know, the truth will set you free, but it'll piss you off in the process. And, and, and you know, even though it may sound crazy, a lot of these things happen because I mean I get a whim of them and they're saying, "Hey, Clyde, you gotta, you're not going to believe this." And they, and that's, anytime something starts with, "Clyde, you're not going to believe this," I talk about it here because it just seems so bizarre. It's so, I mean, today it was, "You're not going to believe this." They found Jesus's body today, and I go, "Oh, I know." I talked about that three, four months ago. I said, yeah, if this is true, then people are, somebody's going to come forward, someone big and national is going to go, hey, you know, we found Jesus and Mary, you know, and they're, they're buried together somewhere. Because the Da Vinci Code came out, and now, 
while the church was trying to denounce it and saying, oh, the Da Vinci Code was bullshit, now a bunch of people said, no, it's based on something that's true, now we're going to find out what it is, and this is it. Your Jesus didn't die on a cross, ha, 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 ha. And, we can no. and from that, they got to stop the guns. I, what? I believe that there's meth people. You know, I, 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 James Cameron, of all people, and I've been reading the comments that people say, this is just a direct attempt at attacking the Catholic Church. Everybody hates the Catholics. Everybody hates them. I go, okay, and then, you know, I'm wondering, well, do people hate the Jews? Because all I hear about is how bad the Jews are, how bad the Catholics are, how bad the Mormons are, how bad the Baptists are, the Evangelicals are weirdos. I mean, we're all fucked up. This is the apocalypse. And it's not some biblical apocalypse, it's the apocalypse, it's the unraveling. And every single one of us, whether we like it or not, are unraveling now. The apocalypse starts here. It starts in your head, it works to your heart, it goes to your vessels, and then your actions reflect how you feel inside. If you feel like shit, your life is shit. If you feel good, your life is good. And if you allow yourself to buy into the siege mentality, you're always going to feel like you're under the gun. Go ahead. Are you a prophet? Am I a prophet? He's a weatherman. Yeah, I'm a weatherman. I predict the weather. And it doesn't have to be clouds, it doesn't have to be sunshine, it doesn't have to be rainbows. It can be things that are on the horizon that are coming towards me, and I can predict them like I predict the weather. And no one ever, ever, ever says that the weatherman is not qualified, even when he says it's going to rain and it doesn't. He's just got unlucky. He, you know, if he makes an educated guess that a storm is about to hit and it hits right on, people will think he's the greatest. If he misses a couple, no one cares because he, he's the weatherman. I'm a weatherman. I'm a weather or not man. I'm a weather what if man. I am a man who looks at things and says, well, what if? And I don't know if I believe them, but you know, it's not important what I believe, it's what they believe, and it's uh, what they do with their beliefs to you. And it's how you decide to accept them. You can be an atheist and say, well, it doesn't affect me. The hell it doesn't affect you. There are guys up there that talk with God that make laws that affect you if you're an atheist. Well, I'm a Satanist, it doesn't affect me. Bullshit, there are people up there that worship Satan that make laws that affect you here in the United States of America. And if they're not the right kind of people, and if they're doing all this stuff to create this siege mentality, put you in this hyper-reality where you think that everybody's out to get you, then a whole cloud of paranoia has got this planet in its, has got us in its grip. You either choose to be paranoid or you choose to be trusting. It's hard to find that happy medium. Why? Because you live in a interactive apocalypse. Where everything can be clicked, switched on, switched off, turned up, turned down. It can be blared at you, and you can choose to listen, or you choose to ignore it. You choose to be in denial, or you can do something about it, something productive. I tell people that if you can't be active, then use your voice. Speak up. When you're out in public, you're talking in the conversation, talking some conversation, somebody brings up something that you know is bullshit, call them on the bullshit. Call them on your truth. Tell them what you think. Tell them to defend those things that are real and right and righteous. I'm not talking about religion because you know everybody you know thinks religion's like a dirty shirt. It's used spirituality anymore. It's used as a dirty shirt. New age people want you to stroke those crystals. Everybody else wants you to follow Jesus. Everybody else wants you to follow follow Muhammad, or they want to follow you know whomever. Why don't you follow what's in here? And if that apocalypse is happening here, keep it from coming here because once it gets here, sometimes it's hard to get rid of. It's hard to get rid of. Go ahead. I'd just like to say, if I, if I was the devil, I would have a hundred religions, I'd have everybody divided, fighting against each other, and I'd be standing back above the law, and everybody below it, and be telling them what to do, he's bad, no, she's bad, he's bad, and there'd be a war like it is right now. I mean, that's, 
Little sympathy for the devil. The biggest trick the devil ever pulled. There we go. Say it. Was convincing him that he didn't exist. And he did. Convincing everybody that he didn't exist. Kaiser Sosa. But the truth came too, and he did exist. <laughs> Kaiser Sosa. Who is Kaiser Sosa? No one knows who Kaiser Sosa is. No one speaks his name, and no one reveals who he is. If, if one does what God does enough times, one becomes what God is. That was Kaiser Sosa said that. That was Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> Kaiser Sosa, Hannibal Lecter. Where else can you get good quotes like this but a ground zero line? Does anybody else want to add anything? I think we're running out of time, aren't we? We're fine. Are we? Yeah, you still got like another 10, 15 minutes. You're Bye. kidding me. Okay, well. In that case, you put your drink down. Put my drink down. I wanted to say something adding on to what was just said about, about the devil and, 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 uh, and whether or not you know, the devil exists or whether or not the devil exists in some of the higher places of our lives. And I, I guess you could say it's not necessarily a devil or a demon or what have you. It's the idea of chaos and chaotic thought processes that I think need to be addressed. And how we have given into a lot of the chaotic thought processes because they exist in the hyper reality that we live in now. And I always thought to myself that if religions, if, if, if the play of good and evil is real, if there is a devil and there is a Jesus, if there is a God or if there is a demon or some sort of a horrible thing that comes after us, I always thought to myself that if churches were really, really, really worth their weight, then the devil would be working his ass off to try and bring them down. And the best place for him to do that is to get into the place of power and basically wreak havoc. Getting to the top, the upper echelon, and then go in and destroy it from within. That, the capstone, exactly. A lot of people, when they talk about wanting to bring down Walmart, when they want to talk about bring down Starbucks, when they want to bring down all these other places, they say, well, if we protest it, or if we burn it down, that'll be good enough. No, the thing you need to do is you need to get a job there, and then while you're there, from within, you destroy it. That's a virus mentality. That's an alien mentality. So if a devil wanted to get into a church or into a government, he has to get into the highest places and he has to change the thought processes of the people. Get them to do things they wouldn't normally do. Get them to accept death on a daily basis. Get them to watch death on television on a daily basis. Get them to believe that the best way to free themselves is to destroy themselves. Or the best way to free a people is to destroy that people. These are some very, very, very chaotic thought processes. How many of us believe, honestly, that the way to save ourselves is to kill ourselves? Nobody believes that. And if they do, they're mentally ill. So then why is it that we get the messages all the time in this hyper reality that the way for ourselves to be free, to feel better about ourselves, it destroys someone else? destroy their way of life, ruin their lives and their, their liberties and their, and their things that they hold dear. We don't have respect for those things or those people because they, they don't belong in our reality. We want them eliminated from our reality. And so we're constantly being told in propaganda that this is the way to go. And they're going to find some reason to get the American people to support an Iranian attack. Whether it be enriched uranium, that's not enough. There's got to be an accelerator event that has to happen in order for us to say, okay, that's it, we're going in there. It was enough to get us into Afghanistan, it was enough to get us into Iraq, now we've got to find something else to get us into Iran. And with all of this spiritual zeitgeist going around saying, bombs here, bombs there, everywhere, a bomb bomb, we're beginning to see where they're taking us, where they're leading us. We're beginning to see where it's going to end up. We're beginning to see the reality as it plays out in front of us. And I begin to tell people all the time, don't discredit prophecy when it's being used as a blueprint. Because that's exactly what they're using it as. Anything from Nostradamus, to the book of Revelation, to something else out there some ancient Chinese or Tibetan thing, or, or even what the Muslims say. It's all pick and choose, it's all Alice in Wonderland, it's all looking through the looking glass, it's all hyper-reality. Go ahead. Uh, it was either Friday or Saturday night, uh, reading on Drudge, 
Israel petitioned to be to have um, the okay to go bomb Iran. So they don't need us to do it. Israel's petitioning to do it for us. Yeah. While while you sleep, they're going to do whatever they want to do anyway, and they're going to want you to give them your commitment to their wars, to their ideologies, to their hegemony, to their hegemony. They're going to want you to participate in their hubris. They're going to want you to jingoistically wave the flag and say it's all for God, country, and mom. They're going to want you to believe that if we don't do this, we're going to lose those freedoms that we hold dear. When they start saying that to you, I want you to ask them what freedoms left that we hold dear that they are taking from us. It is not them that are taking anything from us. It's right here that's being taken from us. Their apocalypse has already started here. It's moved into here. And the arms that they're using are the actions that they decide they want to carry out. And the proof that the apocalypse is beginning is the body count. And the body count continues, and it continues, and it continues. And it's proof that there is a psychosis going on, a sickness going on, and it's something that can be controlled. All we have to do is say stop. All we have to do is say no. And we shouldn't be silent any longer. And if you think that voting is going to do it, then by all means vote someone in there that stands behind those ideals. But be sure to pay attention to what is being said, because I can tell you now, Hillary Clinton is not anti-war. There are several other people out there that think that, hey, I'm a Democrat, I can get in and do what I can do. But don't buy into the surface. Two sides of the same coin. Exactly. Dig deeper. That is your assignment, to dig deeper and to find out their character. Did you want to say something? Oh, I was just going to mention... Come on up, right here. I was just going to mention that Michael Savage has announced that he is going to run for president in 2008. You're going to go for him? Oh, absolutely, man. He's a nice, peace-loving kind of guy. <laughs> we have one vote for Michael Savage. Anybody else vote for Michael Savage? No! No! Michael Savage. Yeah. <laughs> Who's Michael Savage? Who, you, who was Michael Savage? Yeah, Michael Savage is a talk show host that kind of reminds me of Howard Beale a little bit from Network. He's mad as hell and he's not going to take it anymore. Oh. Yeah, he's a pretty, pretty scary guy. But what I'm saying is, is that we have the power to control it. And, and it starts here with, with a little group of people. And I know that sounds very idealistic, but it's true. I mean, if you take anything from this, it's this. And that is, I want you to start believing in the possibility of changing the thought processes to get things to roll the right direction. And even though the people in power are going to be doing their stupid pet tricks, we don't need to contribute to them by supporting their stupid pet tricks. And if it means saying to someone, look, I'm not going to vote unless this shit changes, then by all means say that. If you're going to vote no confidence, then by all means do that. If you're refusing to be a part of the system in your, as your civil disobedience, then by all means do something. But let them know that you're not going to be a nice, well-oiled cog in their machine. Because as long as the machine keeps going, and they keep you on the brink of starvation, you're going to constantly be working and feeling sad and sorry for yourself for as long as you live. And I know there are a lot of people that are unraveling now. You're hearing about people shooting up malls. You're hearing about Britney Spears going crazy. You're hearing about all this other shit going down. People blowing everybody up. That's a symptom of what is to come. That is pretext. That is, that is just the surface. What you're seeing is prologue to the big dance. And I'm afraid that, that big dance is going to frighten a lot of people. And I hope that once that big dance is over with, we can overcome it and realize that we, there's, we're, we're better in numbers than we are on our own, screaming and yelling. And so that's why I encourage people all the time, 
to bring more people out to the Ground Zero Lounge because what's happening here is the ability to voice your opinion and to say things and to show people here in Portland, Oregon that we do talk about these issues. Yes. This is being seen online. Robert has come and he, he comes in here and he videotapes. These shows are seen online. Everything that goes on here, the whole world is seeing. We get up, we get thousands of downloads every day of what goes on here at Ground Zero Lounge. You should be proud of the fact that we're being seen everywhere. You should be proud of the fact that people are seeing us in Hollywood and they're liking what they're seeing. You should be proud of the fact that people envy what we do here. We have people coming in from San Francisco, Romania. They come from Europe. They come from all over just to be a part of this whole thing we do here at Ground Zero Lounge. Even though sometimes we have light crowds, the crowds get bigger, they get smaller, they get bigger, but we do continue to voice our opinion and we do use our voice as a weapon of choice and that that is what I urge you to do every time I get up here on stage. Good night from Ground Zero Lounge. Take care. We love you.